Every single year, we see trades go down involving the NBA draft, and with the draft just a couple weeks away, today I wanted to look at some of the most recent draft night trades that teams are definitely regretting. If you guys like the content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. My stats are telling me that over 50% of y'all that have been watching the videos recently still aren't subscribed. With a draft around the corner, you're gonna wanna hit that button. Let's also try to get 43 likes on today's video, and let's hop into it. For this video, we're going to do at least one trade from the last five drafts, and we're going to start with 2016. I could really only find one to talk about, but man, was it a mistake. The Orlando Magic decided to give the Oklahoma City Thunder the 11th overall pick and Victor Oladipo for Serge Ibaka. Ibaka at the time was 27 years old, averaging 15 points, 6 rebounds, and almost 2 blocks. It really didn't make sense for the Magic that were far from contending to value him that highly. Oladipo was their top pick in 2013. He was just 23 years old at the time of this trade, averaging 16 points and 4 assists. Yes, he was due for a new contract, but you can make a strong argument that his value wasn't too far away from Ibaka straight up. It definitely wasn't worth Oladipo plus the 11th overall pick. The trade was questionable at the time, but that insult to injury, that 11th overall pick became Gonzaga power forward DeMontis Sabonis. This past season, he averaged 20 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists. But to make things even worse, after solid seasons in Oklahoma for both of them, the Thunder were able to trade the duo for Paul George. So in a way, the Thunder traded Serge Ibaka for Paul George. Or because the Thunder ended up trading Paul George, they traded Serge Ibaka for Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, and a million first round picks from the Clippers. Ibaka would be traded by the Magic just a year later for Terrence Ross in a first. This has to be a painful trade looking back for a Magic team that had Aaron Gordon at the time and their current rebuild would look a lot different with Sabonis on the roster. Since that's the only one we're talking about for 2016, we're going to go to 2017 where we've got some really interesting ones to look back at. We've got to start with what happened at number one. The Celtics won the lottery, but the 76ers were at three, and they decided that since the process was coming to completion, with Simmons and Embiid on the team, that they would trade up to number one for the clear top prospect in Markel Fultz. There was no reason to believe he wasn't going to be a star in the league. In his freshman season at Washington, he averaged 22 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists, shooting 48% from the field and 41% from three. He was consistently getting compared to the likes of James Harden. No one criticized their decision to give up the third overall pick and a future first to move up to number one. It was impossible to predict the events that would happen following that selection. Marco Fultz would get this unexplainable shoulder injury, an injury that caused him to completely change his jump shot. He would miss most of his rookie season and once returning for the final 14 games, averaged just seven points on terrible efficiency and not even making a single three. It wouldn't get any prettier in his second season. The 76ers would decide to trade him to the Orlando Magic for James Ennis, a first and a second. Now, since getting to Orlando, he started to turn things around. He earned himself a decent contract, but he's far from reaching the value associated with the number one overall selection. The third overall pick that the 76ers traded up from ended up becoming Jason Tatum, who at just 22 years old has already become a top player in the league, averaging 26 points, 7 rebounds, and 4 assists shooting 46% from the field and 39% from three. It's crazy to think about just how different this 76ers team could have been if they landed Tatum over Fultz. Would they have beat the Raptors in 2019 and gone on to win the title? How different would their season look this year, playing alongside Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid? No matter how you put it, this one has to burn for 76ers fans. The other trade from this class is another crazy one. Going into the 2017 NBA draft, the Denver Nuggets held the 13th pick, but on the night of the draft, they decided to trade that pick to the Utah Jazz for Trey Lyles in the 24th pick, which they used to draft Syracuse power forward Tyler Lydon. The Nuggets were clearly trying to adjust the power forward position with this trade, but man, this is hard to look back at, especially since they were able to sign power forward Paul Millsap during free agency that year. Tyler Lydon played just 26 games in the NBA, scoring just 23 points. Trey Lyles played just two seasons with the Nuggets, averaging less than 10 points and five rebounds. Now looking back, regardless of who went with this pick, it was a bad trade. But that 13th pick ended up becoming Donovan Mitchell. It became very clear very early in his career that he was the real deal, and he hasn't slowed down since. He just led the Jazz to the top seed in the West, averaging 26 points, five assists, and four rebounds, shooting 39% from three. This is a scary what if to think about. 
The Nuggets were one of the top teams in the league this season, led by the MVP Nikola Jokic. They had a very strong chance at making a finals of they had a very strong chance at making a finals appearance, but sadly, Jamal Murray went down with injury. Just imagine how dangerous Mitchell and Jokic would have been, or when healthy, a big three of Murray, Mitchell, and Jokic. The league really lucked out by the Nuggets chasing for a power forward. I think this is just another great example of how talent is always, and I mean always more important than fit when it comes to the NBA draft. Now we go to 2018, where the biggest trade was easily the Luka Doncic Trey Young trade, but we just did a whole video talking about that, so if that sounds interesting, go check out the latest video. We're not going to be talking about that one in this video. The first trade we've got here involves the 76ers again. I'm sorry, Philadelphia fans. The Phoenix Suns held the number one pick, and they decided to go DeAndre Ayton, but they weren't done for the night. They also held the 16th pick, and they decided to trade up for the rights to the 10th overall pick, Mikel Bridges with the 76ers, giving up the 16th pick and a future first rounder. They decided to go with Zaire Smith at 16, and that future first would eventually be traded to Oklahoma City. Smith played just 13 games in the NBA and is now in the G League. Mikel Bridges became exactly what the Suns wanted him to be. He's now one of the most valuable role players in the league. He's one of the best wing defenders, and this year averaged 14 points as a 43% three-point shooter. His value has become very clear during Phoenix's run to the NBA Finals. This just adds to the what if we talked about in 2017. If the 76ers would have just calmed down, stayed where they were in 2017 and 2018, they could have Tatum and Mikel Bridges out there on the wings with Simmons and Embiid. Man, would that be one of the best defensive cores we've ever seen. The next trade for 2018 is between the Clippers and Hornets. The Hornets were at 11 and the Clippers had back-to-back -back picks following them. The Hornets decided to grab Shea Gilgis Alexander with the 11th overall pick, but ended up trading him to the Clippers for the 12th pick and two future second rounders. That 12th overall pick became Miles Bridges, who's been solid. This year, he averaged 13 points on great efficiency. It looks like he has a bright future ahead, but nothing compared to SGA. In just his third season at 22 years old, he averaged 24 points, six assists, and four rebounds, shooting 51% from the field and 42% from three. Now, the Clippers would end up trading him for Paul George, but the Hornets would have had no reason to do that. Could we be seeing a LaMelo SGA backcourt in Charlotte right now? Now we go to the 2019 NBA draft. We saw two teams move up into the top six, and both those trades are making this list. The New Orleans Pelicans were sitting with the first overall and fourth overall selections. There was no way they were moving from number one with a chance to get Zion Williamson, but they ended up trading that fourth overall pick to the Atlanta Hawks for the eighth and 17th selections. At 8, they would go with Jackson Hayes, and at 17, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. At the time, it seemed like a very solid haul. Both these guys have been solid role players since, but it's safe to say the Pelicans wish they just stayed at 4 and drafted DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter had an amazing season to start the year before going down with injury. In the first 17 games, he was averaging 18 points, shooting 52% from the field and 38% from three, while making an impact on the defensive end. Then we had the Minnesota Timberwolves, who gave up Dario Saric in the 11th overall pick to go up to number six and take Jarrett Culver. I absolutely loved this trade at the time. I thought it was a massive steal. In just his second season, though, Jarrett Culver is averaging five points on terrible efficiency. It's not looking great for his future in the league. That 11th overall pick ended up being Cam Johnson. It looked like a reach at the time, but he's become an extremely solid 3 and D wing, and at the least, is a massive upgrade to Culver. But just two picks later, we also saw Tyler Hero come off the board. Now for 2020, there was really no big trades at all. There was a lot of rumors with teams like the Warriors at 2, but they ended up staying put and taking James Wiseman over LaMelo Ball. So I guess the biggest draft night trade mistake was really the Warriors not making a trade. But that's the video, guys. You guys give me your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe.